Hi, I'm Julia Griffith in association with Gem A. In this video, we will discuss the use of the polariscope. This is a quick and useful tool that will help us to identify the optical nature of a gemstone and conclude whether it is singly or doubly refractive. These gems are known as isotropic or anisotropic, respectively. This tool will also identify gems with a polycrystalline nature and on a few occasions the polariscope can fully identify the gem. A polariscope can be used on rough, cut, set and loose gemstones. The only limitation is that the gemstone must have some transparency and that the setting does not inhibit us from viewing any light travelling through the stone. There are two types of polariscope. A portable polariscope, like the one in your Gem A kit, which requires an additional light source, and a bench polariscope with a built-in light source which plugs straight into the mains. A polariscope is made up of two polarising filters. In the portable polariscope, these filters are fixed at a 90 degree angle to one another. In a bench polariscope, the top filter is rotatable and must be turned to be fixed at 90 degrees. To use the portable polariscope, open the polariscope fully by moving the two filters back on themselves to lock it into place. Put the polariscope on your light source and turn the light source on. The test results will be most easily seen in an area without surrounding light. When looking through the polariscope, the bottom stage will appear dark. This indicates the polarizing filters are at 90 degrees to one another, which is also known as the crossed position. With a bench polariscope, turn the top filter until the bottom stage appears its darkest. When a gemstone is placed in between these two filters and turned, it will create one of four basic patterns of light and dark, depending on the optical nature of the gem. This piece of equipment does require practice at first to ensure that you can recognise the patterns effectively. If the gemstone appears dark on one full 360 degree rotation, the gemstone is singly refractive and will either be cubic or amorphous. Gems that show this pattern include garnets, spinel, diamond and glass. If a gemstone appears light on one full 360 degree rotation, the gemstone is polycrystalline. Gems that show this pattern include polycrystalline quartz, such as agate, adventuring quartz and chalcedony. If the gemstone appears light, then dark, four times in one full 360 degree rotation, the gemstone is doubly refractive and will be in one of the six doubly refractive crystal systems. Please note that the gem may not go dark all at once. The darkness may pan across the stone as it is rotated, but it will go completely light at four points during this rotation. Gems that show this pattern include corundum, topaz, zircon and beryl. If iridescence is seen when looking through the polariscope, this indicates that you are looking along the optic axis of a doubly refractive gem. To be sure that this is the case and that you're not viewing iridescence in a fracture or other inclusion, turn the gem on a different axis and test again to see the light and dark patterns. If a gemstone is a mix of light and dark throughout the entire 360 degree rotation, this is another test result for singly refractive gems, so either cubic or amorphous, but these gems also contain strain within its structure. This is known as anomalous extinction effects, or AEE, or anomalous double refraction, also known as ADR. The possible identities of these stones are the same as the other singly refractive gems that go dark through 360. Two of these ADR patterns can fully identify the gemstone. The first is writhing snakes, which is seen in most man-made glass, which is also known as paste. The second is tabby extinction, which is seen in most synthetic spinel. It is important to note that the shape of the gem and the colour of the gem may affect the ADR pattern seen in the stone, so it might be harder in darker colours. Here are some other common variables that can confuse gemologists when using the polariscope. 
The first to watch out for may be inclusions within the stone, which can reflect the light coming from the light source below and react differently to the rest of the gem. These include fractures and crystals. Please ignore these inclusions and just focus on the body of the stone. Another factor that can affect results is a dark rim seen when the gem is in its light position. This dark rim is seen in gems when the angle of the crown facets reflects away the light from the polariscope, making these areas look dark, but this might still be the gem going completely light. To make sure whether this is the case or not, remove the top filter of the portable polariscope. What you see here is what the gemstone will look like from its lightest position if it has one. If the dark areas are still present when the top filter is removed, they can then be ignored when put under the polarizing filter. To see this comparison in the bench polariscope, turn the top filter to its lightest position and then back again to compare how the gem looks under both crossed and uncrossed filters. For bi-coloured stones or stones with uneven coloration, do not confuse these colour tones with the stone going light and dark. To check whether this is the case with your gemstone, again remove the top filter to view how the stone would look in its lightest position so that you can cancel out any colour tone effects from your results. I hope you have found this video helpful on how to use the Polariscope. I'm Julia Griffith, thank you for watching.